Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Atawok Windows Pro Blue. This watch is available from Atawok.com for $650. US So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with a piece. So the watch comes in this watch box, which is coated with a tan PU leather. Contrasting white stitching around the perimeter is done to a good standard. There's a flap lid, one pulls up, and the interior is fully lined with a terracotta toned velour fabric to a good standard. There's a pocket in the underside of the flap lid, and in the base, the watch sits on a padded pillow cushion, as one would expect. The padded pillow cushion is also upholstered with a terracotta velour fabric to a good standard. So nice presentation, and Atawok deserve credit for coming up with an original watch box design, rather than just using the default option of a plastic or cardboard watch box. With regards to the items, this is the owner's instruction manual, clear concise diagrams. The instructions are in English and it details the operation of the movement used, which is the Miyota Caliber 82S0 automatic. So Atawok modify the Caliber 82S0. They fit a skeletonized rotor, which they produce themselves, and they also fit hour and minute wheels rather than using conventional hands. This doesn't have the usual three hands, an hour, minute and second hand. It has wheels instead of hands, which I'll show you. This is the plastic warranty card that comes to the watch and I'm pleased to report the Windows Pro Blue is covered by a two year international warranty. Usually at this price point, 650 US dollars within the mid tier, one would expect a 12 month international warranty. So to get a two year international warranty is very good. And lastly, one also gets this Atwok tag and on the reverse, we have the reference number of the Windows Pro Blue and also the barcode of the piece. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Atawok Windows Pro Blue. We have a 42 millimeter case diameter. We have a lug to lug measurement of 44.4 millimeters, a thickness of 13.7 millimeters, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. The genuine leather strap is nubuck finished, and it tapers from 20 millimeters out the lugs down to the signed buckle and tang. And as you can see, the buckle is signed to high standard with the Atawok logo. Good heavy gaze to the 316L grade stainless steel buckle, flawless mirror polishing to the top side, underside and flanks, no sharp edges to it. On the genuine leather strap, we have two keepers, one slides, one's fixed as one would expect. So we've got two different stitches. We've got contrasting white stitching horizontally at the spring bar end, and we've also got matching blue stitching around the perimeter. Plenty of holes in the strap. It's a padded strap, so it is quite thick at the spring bar end, but it is more flexible at the buckle and tang end. So it is going to require some breaking in to become comfortable with daily wear. The stitching on the underside is done to a good standard and contrasting tan leather to the underside. So it's a very comfortable strap, although it does feel quite stiff. Atawok deserve credit because they've made the correct decision by using quick release stainless steel spring bars rather than conventional spring bars. It's often the case with padded leather straps, so they're very stiff and it's difficult to engage a spring bar tool between the interior of the lugs and also the edge of the leather strap without damaging the lugs. So rather than using uh, conventional spring bars, this negates the need for using a spring bar tool. One can use the quick release spring bars. And as you can see, good attention to detail because we have the Atwok logo embossed on the buckle side. Stitching is good, tan leather is good. It's just going to be stiff and require some breaking in. Nice textured finish to the new buck leather, as you can see. It's rather like suede, although it's smoother than suede, so it's got a nice new buck finish to it. And I think they've made the correct decision because the blue matches the blue of the dial and also the anodized blue ring on the bezel. So with regards to the rest of the specification, we have a flat sapphire crystal with clear AR coating on the underside. And the clear anti-reflective coating does a good job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the flat sapphire crystal. So the inspiration of this Windows, Windows Pro Blue was a 1970s radio. So we've got the horizontal scale as per a 1970s radio to give it a retro vintage look. And as I've detailed, Atawok modify the Miyota Caliber 82S0. So rather than having three hands, which is the convention, an hour, minute, and second hand, they add wheels rather than hands. And as you can see, at the six o'clock position, we have a wheel for the minutes. And at the 12 o'clock position, we have a horizontal scale, which is indexed by another wheel for the hour. 
In the centre we have a third wheel on the top of the cannon pinion. Usually what happens with the calibre 82S0 is one has a second hand which is pressed into the cannon pinion but Atawok have modified it and they fitted a second wheel. So if you look closely in the centre of the dial you can see we have a wheel which rotates around versus using a second hand. So they deserve credit because it is difficult to modify a Miota Calibre 82S0 and rather than using three hands they've produced three wheels, one for the hour, one for the minutes and one for the second respectively. So it's a unique design and I like that this isn't an homage to another piece, they've come up with this completely themselves. And also interesting retro design to have it like a 1970s scale of a vintage radio. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a solid 316L grade stainless steel head of the piece. The bezel is a stepped bezel, so there are actually two bezels, and it's made from two materials. The stainless steel portion is mirror polished in silver. There are also two blue rings, and the rings are made from aluminium, which is anodized, as you can see. The quality of the blue anodizing to the aluminium rings is done to a very high standard. The quality of the mirror polishing to the double-stepped bezel is also done to a very high standard, and that contrasts with the horizontal lines to the brass satin finished flanks. The angular lugs are very well finished, no sharp edges to them. They are correctly proportioned to protect the knurled finished crown. And nice attention to detail because we have a matching anodized aluminium ring on the stainless steel crown, which is knurled finish. And they've inlaid the crown guards with superluminova and also the anodizing on the uh, blue rings around the bezel are also loomed, which I'll show you in the loom test. On the left hand flank, We've got Windows, which is embossed. Personally, I think it would look better if they deleted Windows and they simply had horizontal lines running around the case. But this is subjective. Some collectors might like the embossing of Windows because this is called the Windows Pro Blue. But I think just having the horizontal lines would have looked more aesthetically pleasing. With regards to the case back, it's a screw down stainless steel exhibition case back with the reference number of the piece. And it's also interesting to note that this is a limited production run of 500 pieces and every one of the 500 pieces has a uh, number. So this is number 246 of 500 and it's screwed down with four flat head screws. The screw down exhibition case back provides an effective hermetic seal to 30 meters. Really I think that's disappointing specification at this price point, 650 US dollars. For a push-pull crown piece, one would expect a minimum of 100 metres. 50 metres is the bare minimum, but really push-pull crowns should provide 100 metres. Screwed down exhibition case backs are easily able to provide 100 metres of hermetic seal, so 30 metres is weak specification. Although it does do a good job of displaying the skeletonized rotor, which Atawok have made themselves, rather than just using the standard Miota Calibre 82S0 rotor. Now with regards to the engraving, it's done to a high standard and the quality of the brass satin finishing to the screw down case back is good. The edge of the square screw down case back is mirror polished to a very high standard so the quality of the finishing is good and it's good to see that this is a numbered piece, 246 of 500. It's relatively low profile rather than being a bubble back case back and there's enough clearance to clear the rotor. The centre section is glazed with mineral crystal which is a cost cutting measure. At $650 US dollars, one would like to see a sapphire glazed exhibition case back although many brands, especially micro brands, use mineral crystal as a cost cutting measure. So sapphire crystal on the front with AR coating, mineral crystal in the exhibition case back. Right, so with regards to the crown, it's knurled finish, anodized blue ring, and it's CNC lathe tool machined on the cap, as you can see, engraved to a good standard with the Atawok emblem. And the knurled stainless steel crown is a push-pull crown rather than screw-down crown, which is acceptable for a daily wear piece. This isn't a dive watch. But again, this only provides 30 meters of hermetic seal. At 650 US dollars, I would expect to see 100 meters with a push-pull crown. And I think that this is a cost-cutting measure, only having 30 meters. So in the closed position, one can manually wind the modified Miota Calibre 82S0 to top it up to its maximum 42-hour power reserve. Now it doesn't feel as smooth to manually wind. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up to 42 hours. It doesn't feel as smooth as a Seiko NH38 or a 35A, which you'll be familiar with. It feels very similar to the Miota Calibre 8215, which of course the 8000 series are based upon. The 82S0 used in this piece, the architecture of it is very similar to the 8215. It's a skeletonized version of it. So of course it does feel very similar to manually wind. 
it just doesn't feel as smooth and as pleasant as a Seiko NH35A or 38. Pulling it out to the first click position is the time setting position, as you can see. Now, there is a negative to this Miyota 82S0, and the same applies to the 8215, which it's based upon. It has a noisy rotor. The other negative is it doesn't have hacking. Now, this is a disappointment because early versions of the 82S0 didn't have hacking, but then Miyota updated the 82S0 in 2019. So from 2019 onwards, the 82S0 does have hacking. But if you look closely at the second wheel in the center of the dial, which is rotating around. We're now in the time setting position, as you can see. But the second wheel continues to run. It doesn't hack. And that's a disappointment because it indicates that Atawaki modifying earlier versions of the Miyota 82S0, they should be using the current versions, which were produced after 2019, which have hacking. Miyota did the same with the 8215. They updated it. They added hacking in 2019. So I'm disappointed to see an early version of the 8250 and also think they should have used a higher grade of Miyota movement such as the 9000 series and modified that because 9000 series movements always have hacking. So that's something to note. So in the time setting position it suffers with the same negative as the 8215 which it's based upon. There is some back play if you look close at the crown. You can see there's some clockwise and anti-clockwise backplay. Now, one doesn't get this with Seiko movements such as the NH38 and the NH35A. It doesn't have that amount of backplay. So if you look at the minute register, the marker for the minute on the six o'clock scale, when I rotate the crown clockwise and anti-clockwise, you can see there's some backplay one has to take up before it moves. Now, it doesn't feel as smooth as setting the minute hand on an NH38 or a 35A, and that's a characteristic of the 8215, which this is based upon. It's a skeletonized version of it. The 8, uh, 82S0 is a skeletonized version of the 8215, but the architecture of both movements is the same. They just skeletonize the bridges and also the balance wheel. So it does take some getting used to. One has to take up the slack. Now with regards to the scale, on the right hand side it's 0 seconds and it runs to 60 seconds at the left hand side. So one has to get used to reading the minute marker. As you can see it constantly cycles around with a new marker. And it is easy enough to read. But however, with the hour scale it's more difficult to read because they've recessed. If you look at the white marker, I'm just going to cycle through the 12 hours so you can see it. It's sunk very deep in the slot. Now, I think they should have used a contrasting fluorescent orange, alternatively red or orange uh, hour marker for the hours, because as you can see, using the white marker in that shaded deep slot means it's actually difficult to read which hour the marker is pointing at, even in direct light. And I think that they've made a mistake on this. Had they used fluorescent orange or alternatively orange or red for the markers, also on the minute mark on the six o'clock scale, that would have improved the legibility on this blue version of the Windows Pro. So difficult to read the time and even getting used to it, it's hard to see the white marker in the dark deep slot, as you can see. And this is the problem with not using hands. They've had to overlap the hour hand with the minute hand and then on top of that they've had to stack on the cannon pinion lastly the second wheel on top and it's a disadvantage because the hour wheel sits below both the second wheel and also the minute wheel and because it's sunk so low in the shaded slot as you can see it's very difficult to read a white marker in a shaded dark slot if it were fluorescent orange it would make it so much easier to read so there's room for improvements and refinements so pushing the crown back in uh, continues the movement of uh, running. As you can see, the second uh, wheel doesn't stop. It's a shame it doesn't have hacking. It does operate OK. One can set the time OK. It manually winds OK, although it's not as smooth and pleasant to use. And there is back play in it. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now, thing to note is, although this is a 42 millimeter with a 44.4 lug to lug, it is a tall piece, as you can see, 13.7, so it's going to be more difficult to slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear a business shirt. So it is a large piece, it does wear with wrist presence. 
and I can only just engage the buckle and tang on the last hole in the strap. As you can see, it's a fraction too short to engage the end of the strap with both of the keepers. So the maximum wrist size this will support is seven and a half inches. If they made it half an inch longer, it would fit my eight inch wrist. So this will suit collectors up to a seven and a half inch wrist. Otherwise, you'll need to fit your own 22 millimeter strap. However, there are plenty of holes to allow for fine tuning the length for a six to seven and a half inch wrist. Proportions of the Nubuck Finish leather strap are good, nice taper, but it does feel like a very top heavy piece as 126 grams. It does feel heavy, it feels more like 150 grams, which is the kind of heft one would expect with a bracelet piece. Even on the leather strap, at 126, it is a very heavy piece. It feels like a large square slab of 316L grade stainless steel sitting on top of the wrist rather than curving around it, because as you can see, the undercut to the case is flat. It has a flat square screw down exhibition case back. The shape of the case isn't a tonneau case. It doesn't curve and wrap around the wrist. So one gets this abhorrent gap underneath the end of the strap and also the end of the lugs. I think they could have improved this by making it slightly curved. If they'd made it a curved tonneau square case, it would have wrapped around the wrist very well because as it is, it sits on top of the wrist rather than curving round. And also it visually looks very thick because they've used a double stepped bezel rather than just using a single domed bezel. So I think there's room for improvement. One could argue it does have an Art Deco style to the bezel. And of course this is inspired by 1970s radio. So of course they wanted to make it retro looking and vintage with a horizontal scale. But as you can see, the legibility of the hour marker is poor because it's very shaded in the deep slots. But on the minute scale at the six o'clock position, the white marker is easier to read. Also, the second wheel is difficult to read because, again, it's recessed um, in the skeletonized style. You can see there's a deep milled slot or molded slot. So it's actually difficult to read the white Arabic numerals on the seconds moving around. I think there's room for improvement. They could make the skeletonized dial thinner and therefore reduce the shading and also the steps because it does create a lot of shadows. If this had fluorescent orange markers, it would be far easier to read. So the design is good, the legibility is poor, and the clear AR coating works okay, but unfortunately it's difficult to read the time. So it's one of these watches which is design over function, and I personally prefer watches to have a good balance between function and design. One has to be able to read the time, that is the purpose of the watch. So finishing is good to the head of the piece, the strap is very well finished and very aesthetically pleasing, but I just think there's room for improvement with regards to the execution of the functionality. So proportions, there's room for improvement. 44.4 is relatively short for the lug to lug. 13.7 is slightly too tall, I think they should have reduced it to 13 or below it. And really 42 is quite large, so clearly this is going to suit collectors with a larger wrist of 7 to 8 inches due to the wrist presence. And it does feel like a very top heavy piece, being 13.7 millimetres thick and 126 grams. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged, and as you can see, it's interesting that they have loomed one of the bezel rings, as you can see, with Superluminova, and also they've loomed the crown guards. They've inlaid the crown guards with two uh, triangular shape loom portions, which does add some interest. Now, with regards to the loom used, which is Swiss Superluminova, it does look like BGW9 on the Arabic numerals and also the hour mark and the minute mark, um, but it's weak. And really, I think they could improve upon this. It should have five to six layers on the Arabic numerals and also the hour and minute markers. But as you can see, it's immediately beginning to fade quickly to nothing. So the legibility is poor. Now, the performance of the bezel ring, which is in blue Superluminova, and also the two crown guards is actually better. And I think it's a shame that they didn't use the same performance of Superluminova on the Arabic numerals, on the skeletonized dial, and the hour and minutes uh, wheels. Uh, I think that it really does need an improvement. So this really looks like two to three layers of Superluminova used on the skeletonized dial and also the hour and date wheels. Um, I think they should have used five to six layers, and it's disappointing because this is a 650 US dollar piece. One really would expect higher performance BGW9, five to six layers, alternatively C3 Superluminova used. Because as you can see, if you look at the ring around the bezel and also the crown guard inlay, 
They're both glowing very brightly and there's a good colour tone match between the crown guards and the ring around the bezel. But looking at the dial and also the hour and minute wheels, it's now faded to nothing. So it's actually impossible to read in the dark, which is it negates the purpose of having loom on the dial and hands, or in this case, dial and wheels. So disappointing performance. Uh, I'd like to see some improvement. Right, so let's discuss the movement used. So as I've detailed, this uses the Miota Calibre 82S0 and Atawok modify it. So they remove the Miota rotor and they fit their own skeletonized rotor. Three-pointed star is well executed and they've also milled scallops around the three-pointed star. Brush satin finish to it, as you can see, and it's also engraved with the Atawok emblem. So the rotor is well finished and it's bi-directional. It rotates both clockwise and anti-clockwise. But however, as per all 8000 series Miota movements, it does have a noisy rotor. And even though they've added their own rotor, they haven't reduced the noise. Now, the 82S0 is based upon the 8215. It's a skeletonized version. The negative of the 8215 and this 82S0 is the rotor is very noisy. Although it can rotate clockwise and anticlockwise, it's actually a unidirectional winding movement. The rotor has to spin clockwise in order to wind the movement. When the rotor spins anticlockwise, it has negligible winding effect. And so it's an inefficient movement as a result because it's not bidirectional winding, it's unidirectional. Now the other negative as I've detailed is the lack of hacking and it's a disappointment because we're now in 2022. Post 2019 Miota 8250s have hacking but as you can see looking at the second wheel it doesn't hack it continues to rotate as I demonstrated I'm now in the time setting position the second wheel continues to run so they're using earlier versions pre 2019 rather than post 2019 versions with hacking which is a clear cost-cutting measure. So disappointing. The other thing is, this is 650 US dollars, and I would expect to see a Miota 9000 premium movement used, such as a modified um, 92S5, rather than using an 8000 series, such as this 82S0. So with regards to the specifications of the movements, uh, the 82S0 is an automatic made in Japan. It has 21 joules. It runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 3 hertz. 42 hour power reserve is perfectly acceptable. It has hand winding but doesn't have hacking. Uh, if it were a post 2019 version, it would have hacking. The stated accuracy is minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day, so rather wide accuracy range. The same accuracy is the H38 and 35A respectively. This one is running consistently at plus 10 seconds per day, so plus 10 is within the minus 20 to plus 40 stated accuracy, but plus 10 isn't very impressive, although it is typical for an 8215 or the 82S0, which this is. I think they could do a better job of regulating the movement to get it within plus or minus five seconds per day. Plus 10 really is the minimum in terms of accuracy for an 8000 series. So skeletonized version of the 8215. The 8215 has been in use since 1977, so it's reliable, well-proven workhorse movements. The architecture of both movements is the same. The only difference is that they skeletonize the bridges, they skeletonize the balance wheel, and this also has an Atawok skeletonized rotor added, but there's no decoration to it as per the 9000 series. So it's a low grade of Miota movement, it's just the skeletonized version of the 8215. Unidirectional rotor, and also we have it's noisy. So they are the main negatives and the lack of hacking. On a positive note, it's reliable, well-proven workhorse movement, so it does do the job although it's not particularly efficient because it's unidirectional winding versus being bidirectional. It's a real shame that they didn't use the 9000 series and modify uh, a 92S5. That would have been a much better movement because that's beautifully decorated with plage finishing and also a skeletonized balance wheel. And it's a higher grade of movement with hacking and it's just a higher grade altogether. So disappointing to see an 8000 series movement used in a 650 US dollar piece. Right, so lastly I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the Watch Me 2 criteria should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So $650 US is the price point of this piece. The quality is good, but however, the value is poor. I think there is room for improvement. They 
really need to refine the quality of the Luminova used. They should upgrade this to five to six layers of BGW9, or alternatively five to six layers of C3 Super Luminova. And really, as an alternative to that, they could change the white markers on the hour wheel and also the minute wheel to fluorescent orange, orange or red, in order to improve the legibility, because using white, particularly with the hour um, wheel, it's difficult to read the time, so that's a disappointment. The weak superluminova is also a disappointment. And of course, the disappointing feature of using an 8000 series Miota Calibre. Now, I appreciate they've done significant work with it because they've produced this skeletonized rotor, which is expensive to produce. And they've also modified it because they haven't just used an hour, minute and second hand. They have added wheels, which they've had to make for the hour wheel, the minutes wheel and also the second wheel. So there is some work involved in modifying a Calibre 82S0. But had they modified a... 92S5 9000 series that would have been a far better choice and it would have better justified the 650 US dollar price point. So quality is good uh, with regards to the build quality, quality control, finishing and materials used they are all good but the weak Superluminova is disappointing, the movement the 82S0 is disappointing and also 30 meters of hermetic seal on the crown and the screwed down exhibition case back really is disappointing. Even with a push-pull crown, they should be able to produce 100 metres, and with a screw-down case back, 100 metres is the minimum. 30 metres for a daily wear piece is very disappointing. I appreciate it's a push-pull crown versus a screw-down crown, and this isn't a dive piece, so one doesn't need 200, but really 100 is the bare minimum. So disappointing with regards to value, but I would say the quality is good. So I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Atawok Windows Pro Blue. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.